What's up, YouTube? It's your boy GPs on the keys, and it's too easy. And we're back with another video today. History of Russia Part Two. When we left off, if I remember, we were talking about the years of troubles where the city was getting burnt. It was basically an anarchy for twelve years. Without further ado, let's just get into it. Before we, before the video even starts, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. We are really close to that six K. I feel like that ten thousand. I feel like that 10K is kind of close coming up. Let me know in the comments what I should do for 10,000. What should we do for 10,000? I feel like we should do something. We should do, I should, I feel like I should do something for y'all for 10,000. Like I should give something, maybe give away something, give away some, some like, some codes, like some, some gift cards or like some Xbox or PlayStation or PS or PlayStation codes or some type of something. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I should give y'all something because y'all helping me out. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my Russian supporters out there, because I, I get a lot of comments that are actually in Russian, so I do actually translate a lot of those comments, though. So yeah, shout out to all my Russian supporters. In 1612, Russia was in a state of anarchy. They called it the Time of Troubles. The people were terrorized by war, famine, and plague. Up to a third of them perished. Foreign troops occupied Moscow, Smolensk, and Novgorod. But then, Russia fought back. Prince Pozharsky and a merchant, Kuzma Minin, led the Russian militia to Moscow and threw out the Polish garrison. Since 2005, this event has been commemorated every 4th of November as Russian National Unity Day. The Russian Assembly, the Zemsky Sabor, realized the country had to unite behind a new ruler and elected a 16-year-old noble, Mikhail Romanov, as the next Tsar. His dynasty would rule Russia for the next 300 years. That's, just think about that. You're 16 years old, and now you're the Tsar of Russia. Five years ago, you was playing around, and you was playing in the field. Like, probably that time they were running around playing games, probably just running around with their mom and dad. And now you're 16 years old, and now you're the, you're the Tsar of Russia. The amount of pressure and responsibility is unbelievable. I can I can't imagine how much you can't you can't make me president of the United States now. Like I'm not like I'm not gonna almost fold underneath the pressure. That's a lot of pressure. You know what I'm saying? Like that's. Mm. Tsar Mikhail exchanged territory for peace, winning Russia much needed breathing space. His son Tsar Alexei implemented a new legal code, the Sabornoya Ulugenya. It turned all Russian peasants, 80% of the population, into serfs, effectively slaves, their status inherited by their children and with no freedom to travel or choose their master. So basically just dictatorship. He just went, this man, how you go, how do you go from, hey, we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna go over here and make peace in all these other countries, you know what? We're gonna make all we're gonna make all you people slaves, and your children are gonna be slaves, and your children's children are gonna be slaves, and you can't do anything about it. Sounds similar to American slavery, but still, that's that's ridiculous. That's that's crazy. Like you just lock you just lock people into a hey, since you're poor and you can't like this is this is different. This is like this is like economic slavery. Like since you're poor, you know what? You, you'll be better off as a slave. Then. It was a system that dominated Russian rural life for the next 200 years. The head of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Nikon, imposed religious reforms that split the church between reformers and old believers. 
It's a schism that continues to this day. Ukrainian Cossacks, rebelling against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, recognized Tsar Alexei as overlord, in exchange for his military support. It led to the Thirteen Years' War between Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Russia emerged victorious, reclaiming Smolensk and taking control of eastern Ukraine. A revolt against Tsarist government, led by a renegade Cossack, Stenkarazin, brought anarchy to southern Russia. It was finally suppressed. Razin was brought to Moscow and executed by quartering. The sickly but highly educated Fyodor III passed many reforms. He abolished Mesnichestva, the system that had awarded government posts according to nobility rather than merit, and symbolically burned the ancient books of rank. But Fyodor died aged just 19. His sister Sophia became princess regent, ruling on behalf of her younger brothers, the joint Tsars Ivan V and Peter I. After centuries of conflict, Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth signed a Treaty of Eternal Peace. Russia then joined the Holy League in its war against the Ottoman Empire. So I like, I like, I like, see, I like how the woman comes along and brings peace. <laughs> Look at that. The woman comes along and she brings peace. You know that that's... that's Sophia's reign also saw the first treaty between Russia and China, establishing the frontier between the two states. At age 17, Peter I seized power from his half-sister Sophia. Peter became the first Russian ruler to travel abroad. He toured Europe with his Grand Embassy, seeking allies for Russia's war against Turkey and learning the latest developments in science and shipbuilding. The war against Turkey was successfully concluded by the Treaty of Constantinople. Russia gained Azov from Turkey's ally, the Crimean Khanate, and with it, a foothold on the Black Sea. Peter made many reforms seeking to turn Russia into a modern European state. He demanded Russian nobles dress and behave like Europeans. He made those who refused to shave pay a beard tax. <laughs> a beard tax. Just, you, you, you saw, you saw the corn, you see my, my corn, my beard starting to grow a little bit. I had to cut it because it was looking mad scruffy. A beard tax? A beard tax. So you couldn't even, you couldn't even let your hair get a little bit, a little bit thick. Gotta cut it or else I'm gonna have to pay. Peter built the first Russian Navy, reformed the army and government, and promoted industry, trade, and education. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm pausing a lot, but like, you gotta think this doesn't make sense because Europe is still looked at as a global superpower. And of course you gotta, of course, we're going to take after Europe because you see how successful Europe is in controlling everything. You know what I mean? Why not take after them and advance your country and follow after the global leaders? In the Great Northern War, Russia, Poland, Lithuania, and Denmark took on the dominant power in the Baltic, Sweden. The war began badly for Russia with a disastrous defeat to Charles XII of Sweden at Narva. But Russia won a second Battle of Narva before crushing Charles XII's army at the Battle of Poltava. On the Baltic coast, Peter completed construction of a new capital, St. Petersburg. The building of what would become Russia's second largest city among coastal marshes was a remarkable achievement, though it cost the lives of many thousands of serfs. 
the Great Northern War ended with the Treaty of Neustadt. Russia's gains at Sweden's expense made it the new dominant Baltic power. Did, did, did they just did they, did they fight wars with swords? I mean, like, did, I don't think I don't think guns were developed. I know gunpowder was developed. I don't think like handheld guns were developed until like the seven, like the late, like the mid seventeen hundreds or something. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Cause I know before they were, I know the, the earliest guns were like in the late in the sixteen hundreds, but I don't think these had enough to like mass produce and give the soldiers. I don't know. Let me know if I'm wrong. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, cause I'm trying to think, like, did they really fight? I mean, around this time, around like the early 1700s, were they fighting with just like swords and like with swords, or were they, were they were they actually using like like somewhat rifles? That's what I, that's what I'm trying to think. Because all I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the Cossacks who were on the who were on the horses with the swords. That's what I'm thinking. Like, just feel me. Let me know if I'm wrong, though. Four years before his death. Peter was declared Peter the Great, father of his country, emperor of all the Russias. Four empresses. Empresses. Peter was succeeded by his wife Catherine, then his grandson Peter II, who died of smallpox, aged just 14. Empress. Wait, so, so he had an 11-year-old leading the country. And also see how they had, they had, they had an 11-year-old, well, never mind, they had an 11-year-old leading the country. That's crazy. Just think about that. The lead of your country is 12, 11, 12. Anna Yanavna, daughter of Peter the Great's half-brother, Ivan V, was famed for her decadence and the influence of her German lover, Ernst Biron. During Anna's reign, Vitus Bering, a Danish explorer in Russian service, led the first expedition to chart the coast of Alaska. He also discovered the Aleutian Islands, and later gave his name to the sea that separates Russia and America. After Anna's death, her infant grandnephew Ivan VI was deposed by Peter the Great's daughter Elizabeth. Ivan VI spent his entire life in captivity. Until age 23, he was murdered by his guards during a failed rescue attempt. Elizabeth, meanwhile, was famed for her vanity, extravagance, and many young lovers. But she was also capable of decisive leadership. In alliance with France and Austria, Elizabeth led Russia into the Seven Years' War against Frederick the Great of Prussia. The Russian army inflicted a crushing defeat on Frederick at the Battle of Kunersdorf, but failed to exploit its victory. Meanwhile, in St. Petersburg, the Winter Palace was completed at vast expense. It would remain the monarch's official residence right up until the Russian Revolution of 1917. Peter III was Peter the Great's grandson by his elder daughter Anna Petrovna, who died as a consequence of childbirth. Wait, 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 the grandson, wait, the, oh, do, oh, okay, okay, I was trying to mix that, I was making sure, okay. Raised in Denmark, Peter spoke hardly any Russian, and greatly admired Russia's enemy, Frederick the Great. So he had Russia swap sides in the Seven Years' War, saving Frederick from almost certain defeat. Peter's actions angered many army officers, and he'd always been despised by his German wife, Catherine. Together, they deposed Peter III, who died a week later in suspicious circumstances. His wife, Catherine, became Empress of Russia. Her reign would be remembered as one of Russia's most glorious. Epic History TV depends on donations from its fans through its Patreon page. All right. I like, I like the, 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 the cycle of 
king of emperors and empresses. We had infants to 11 year olds to a lot of women that I like to see. I like, I like to see, I like to see female representation. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, 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 this has been, I like, this is interesting. This is mad. This is, it's just interesting to watch stuff like this. I don't know why it's just mad interesting. It's like the animal planet. You don't really know why you're watching it, but it's really interesting. Like, like I like watching it. Like, it's just fascinating to hear about stuff that they don't teach you in school. You know, only thing, only, the only thing Russian that I was taught in school was about the Cold War in the Soviet Union. Barely. That's the only thing, that's the only thing related to Russia that I really learned. But anyway, thanks again. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, definitely hit a, a follow my Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. Uh, follow me on a subscribe to my other channel, my gaming channel. The, the, uh, there should be a card up in here, up here somewhere. There should be a link in the description. Maybe some videos on the screen. But anyway, thank you again. Please be safe. Have a great day. Stay on the grind. I'm out. Peace.